and it can cause me to binge or it can cause me to restrict and lay in bed and think about food and think about how I can't eat food. <laughs> So first I want to say that this video may end up being filmed in two different parts because um, I've got about 20 minutes of my lunch break left and I don't know if I can get through this story in 20 minutes. So as you saw in the title, this is part two of my Life with Eating Disorders series and so I thought that for this video maybe I would either talk about what my two eating disorders are or I would start my story with eating disorders, but I think that for today I'm going to start by talking about what my two eating disorders are. Now, the previous video that I made was about body dysmorphia, and body dysmorphia is not actually an eating disorder. Instead, it's something that's often comorbid with one of the eating disorders I do have, which is atypical anorexia. Now. Body dysmorphia can be comorbid with both atypical anorexia and regular anorexia. So I know that you're probably wondering, hey, what is atypical anorexia? I've never heard of atypical anorexia. I've just heard of anorexia. Isn't it just about those really skinny girls who decide they're not skinny enough and so they starve themselves and like all of the frilliness, like very much black swan. Like, isn't that anorexia? And you're right, that is typical anorexia. Atypical anorexia, however, is when people who are either normal weight or overweight or obese like me engage in all of the same eating disorder behaviors and have all of the same symptoms of anorexia except for the weight. So still loss of period, still extreme dieting, still extreme fear of gaining weight, still all of those things that make up anorexia, it's just you don't have the weight. For anorexia, you have to have a BMI of 17, which is 1.5 points below the lowest healthy weight, which it would be a BMI of 18.5. And atypical anorexia is something that can be seen of people of all sizes, shapes, genders, sexualities, all of that. Like I said, it's you still have all of the same symptoms of anorexia, it's just what you don't have is the low weight. Now, I'm going to do a whole video about my three kind of, well, my initial anorexia behavior and then my two relapses. I didn't realize that this was anorexia behavior. Well, actually, now that I think about it, I did kind of realize that the first one was really getting into anorexia behavior. But I didn't think that my second one was, and I did figure it out that my second one was still anorexia behavior when I was dealing with it the third time, and I did a very good job of hiding the fact that I was dealing with anorexic behavior the third time I was even in the hospital doing anorexic behaviors, and nobody knew because it was just looked at as uh, losing weight. So what I want to talk about for a minute is the difference between regular weight loss and anorexia because I've gone through different opinions. Some people in the intuitive eating crowd believe that all dieting is a road to eating disorder behaviors and on the other end of the extreme you have fitness influencers who I'm not even sure if they believe in anorexia and eating disorders other than, you know, I know a lot of fitness YouTubers believe that binge eating disorder is a thing, but they also call, like, everything binge eating disorder, and we're going to get to that in a minute. 
But for me, I think that the difference, and I am not a counselor, I'm not a therapist, I'm not an expert. As I always say, I'm not an expert, I'm just someone with autism with a special interest in health, and especially a special interest in eating disorders. So that's where I get my information from. And for me, I think the difference between a regular healthy dieting behavior and an eating disorder behavior is the amount that it takes over your life. Because I know that for me, I don't remember much of my first time that I went through the anorexic behavior because it was about 11, 12 years ago now. But I know that certainly the second and third time that it took over everything in my life. You know, I was working out all the time. And I mean, I was still, you know, I was still had a job in the case of my uh, second, in the case of both, I still had my job. And then in the case of my second time, I was still going to school. But outside of school and work, outside of when my brain was committed to those activities, it was 100% eating disorder. It was 100% weight loss. It was 100% food. It was 100% at the gym. It was always focused on my weight. It was always focused on losing weight. And it was always focused on how can I get smaller? How can I get skinnier? How can I lose more weight? How can I lose weight more quickly? How can I make sure that people don't realize that I'm losing weight so that they don't uh, start commenting on my behavior? Am I going to be able to keep this up once I tell people what is going to happen? Are people going to expect this from me? Like, it was just those thoughts all the time. And I was even doing some really abusive behaviors towards myself. Uh, one thing I did, I started this during the second eating disorder bout, and it kind of continued in the third eating disorder bout, is that I would watch fat shaming YouTube videos. Uh, I would watch YouTubers that I liked and listen to their fat shaming videos while I was at the gym. And I think that I did that because I wanted to remind myself of what I was working to not be. I wanted to remind myself of like, hey, if you don't want to be fat, if you don't want to be someone that this person that you look up to would make fun of, you have to keep doing this, you have to keep working out, you have to keep swimming, you have to keep building muscle, you have to stop eating, you have to do all of these things in order for this person to approve of you. And I didn't even know those people in this instance. I made no attempt to contact them. Well, actually, no, I think that I may have actually try to tweet at them and be like, hey, by the way, your fat shaming videos are really helping me lose weight. Uh, and it was super, super messed up. You know, if you're doing that, if you are, you know, there's nothing wrong with listening to fitness influencers. But if you're listening to like, you know what, I'm not going to say their names. Uh, I'm sure you know, if you have been in the fitness space, I'm sure you know who I'm talking about. Those YouTubers that every single video is about fat people, about fat shaming, about Tess Holiday, about Amberlynn Reed, about Lizzo, about Virgie Tolvar. I probably said that name wrong. I'm pulling these names from the back of my head. I can't remember. But if you've been on that side of the fitness community, you know how toxic it is. And if you're all you're doing is watching those videos, and especially during my third time when I was dealing with eating disorder behavior, all I was doing was watching those videos on repeat. Like, um, there was a particular YouTuber, again, I'm not going to say names, uh, but I do believe that he is part of the community. Now, he did make, if I remember correctly, did make a video about a YouTuber that he believed, or basically the entire internet believed, had anorexia. Probably, I don't know. I would say maybe she had anorexia. Um, I think you know who I'm talking about, again, if you're on the internet. Um, but other than that, everything was dieting and, you know, very supportive of, was it the amazing shrinking man? That went on, like, a 100-day fast and lost a bunch of weight and then became a fitness influencer. I have... I have so many thoughts. Why don't you guys leave in the comment section whether or not you want me to make a video talking about how toxic the weight loss community is and how it really influenced my rapid decline in my third, uh, in my third 
third eating disorder kind of stent. If you want me to do that, let me know. So now on the other side, I want to talk about binge eating disorder. So yes, I do have both uh, anorex atypical anorexia and binge eating disorder. I go through them at different times. Um, so I guess the easiest way for me to say is that binge eating disorder, well, I really hate the way that our society uses the word binge. Like, no one is making you feel bad about binging uh, episodes of Friends or The Office. Like, yeah, sure, maybe they're like, hey, you should get some work done. But overall, we kind of see the word binging as just watching a lot or doing a lot, eating a lot, whatever. And that's not what binging necessarily is. The key component of binging is shame. So, for example... Um, I didn't do any binging during my, after my first, I don't, I did a little bit, but not really. I didn't really do a lot of binging until I moved out on my own because I didn't want my mom to see me binging when I lived at home. I didn't want my dad to see me binging when I lived at home. Binging is by its inherent nature something that you do in secret in private. So my mom will ask me like, oh, what did you have for dinner? I'll be like, oh yeah, um, I had some, uh, I had some ramen. When actually I had binged on like eight tacos. Uh, it's something that you feel a loss of control over. Like you don't want to do it, but you feel emotionally like you need to, or you have to. Um, my therapist thinks that my binging is like a self-destructive, self-harm behavior uh, that I do when I'm frustrated and I'm angry that I binge and I eat and I eat and I eat. Um, with me having gastroparesis, or you know, suspected of having gastroparesis, you're probably wondering how that works, and my answer is I don't know, it just does. I just know that when I binge eat, I eat and I eat and I eat. Um, there was a period of time where I would eat so much that I would get sick, but I wouldn't force myself to get sick other than the amount that I was eating, which is really what separates uh, bulimia from binge eating disorder. That's a big misconception that a lot of people have, is that they think of anorexia and bulimia as being the more similar two, but really it's binge eating disorder and bulimia that are the more similar two. So... Both bulimia and binge eating disorder share the common symptom of binging, of eating massive amounts of food in secret, but either eating much faster than a normal person would eat or eating much more than a normal person would eat. But the difference between someone with bulimia, which I don't have, and binge eating disorder, which I do, is that someone who is bulimic will engage in compensatory behaviors. So they will abuse laxatives, they will purge, they will do excessive exercise. And for me, I don't do any of those things. Now, like I said, there was a period where I was throwing up the food because it would upset my stomach. But from what I understand, that doesn't make it automatically bulimia because I wasn't doing that on purpose. Um, well, I kind of was. I was eating to the point where I would throw up, but I wasn't making myself throw up in this traditional sense of, like, forcing yourself to throw up. It was something that was happening because I was binging, but I wasn't forcing it to happen by taking different uh, measures to do it. Um, I feel like binge eating disorder is definitely the most stigmatized of the three. I think that... It is, and by most stigmatized, I mean like, again, going back to the fitness community, like, it's assumed that everyone that's, you know, a 3X has binge eating disorder when, like, that's not necessarily true. Like, for example, mom, I love you so much, I'm going to use you as an example. Like, my mom is overweight. As far as I know, my mom doesn't binge. She just uh, likes soda and <laughs> is overweight. Whereas for me, like, I... I do binge, and it's a big factor. It's not the only reason why I'm overweight, but I mean, I gained like 30 pounds. See my body dysmorphia video that I did. I gained a lot of weight from just binging, from forcing myself to eat, and it was really, really tricky 
you know. Um, one thing that I want to talk about with the intersection of the two is that for me, and I don't know if this is because I have bipolar disorder or why exactly this is, but for me, I do both. I will go through periods of time where I restrict and periods of time where I'm binging and I think about calories a lot and sometimes thinking about calories can trigger a binge for me because I'll be like, well, I'm already over so I may as well eat whatever I want. Or vice versa, sometimes I go through periods where, like, I'm afraid to eat, and even though I don't normally get hungry because I'm thinking about food all the time, I do get hungry to the point where I'm, like, starving and ravenous and I need to eat. If you take Reglan, and you know how about 30 minutes after you take Reglan, maybe 45 minutes after you take Reglan, you get, like, this just big urge to eat, like, your body's being like, you need to eat, you need to feed me feed me, feed me. Like, that's the way that I will get and not, like, just kind of feeling like I'm forced to eat. That's the way it feels. Um, and it can cause me to binge or it can cause me to restrict and lay in bed and think about food and think about how I can't eat food. Like, it's a very, it's a very difficult thing. <laughs> oh gosh, guys. I have literally been sitting here rambling for 17 minutes now, uh, but I guess this video I'm probably going to call it like my experiences with two eating disorders. Um, this is, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I'm going to take some time over the next week or so to really write out my, um, my experiences and kind of talk about what I want to talk about in each of the three videos. That's what I think I'm going to do. I'm going to split it into the first section, the first eating disorder stuff, the eating disorder stuff in college, the eating disorder stuff in 2020, and then probably a fourth video about the late 22, early 23, which is more about binging and not about restricting. So I'm going to work on those four videos. Um, I don't know what I'm going to have up for you guys next week. But I hope you enjoy this video, and I hope you enjoy next week's video. Alright, bye guys. Bye.